Let's see. Let's try to examine things from every angle and make sense of it all. Who am I? When one is as lost as I am, it's always good to start from the beginning. My name is Charles. I'm 64 years old and my personal wealth is estimated at $35 billion, making me one of the richest, most powerful men in the world. Majority shareholder in Big Brother Media Co., one of the largest media conglomerates on Earth. I'm at the head of an empire through which I elected and relieved presidents of their duties, waged wars and organized peace treaties, empowered talentless idiots, and destroyed men of value who question my authority. All of this with a simple phone call. Depressions, suicides, murders, I have more blood on my hands and more wrecked lives than any dictator or president. And yet they must rely on their armed forces. My secret? You. I manipulate two billion readers and listeners as I wish every day through my multimedia companies. Two billion robots who think exactly the way I tell them to, whom I hold in the palm of my hand. There are poor bastards who have to pay whores to have their dicks sucked. Presidents and ministers have to pay to suck mine. What effect does this have on me? What is it like to see a statesman on his knees in front of you, mouth wide open, ready to eat it all up deep down his throat, just because you have the power to transform reality as you see fit? Nothing at all. Not even the slightest shiver. As I've never enjoyed it, I've never felt the slightest remorse, regrets, or qualms. And why would I have felt anything? Why would I have felt the slightest feeling of power? The place I occupy in this world and my actions are in line with the natural and ancestral order of things. The survival of the fittest. Weak and powerful people. It's always been like this and always will be. I consider myself as the greatest programmer in the world a programmer of minds and consciences. Yet what I did not suspect is that I was also a product, like everyone else, a product created by my father. What do you say, Charles? Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, sweetie. Wait, Charles. What for, Daddy? I'm hungry. Charles, there are things more important than ice cream. Things more important than ice cream? It doesn't exist. What are you, Charles? What do you mean, what am I? Think about it. I'm a boy. Good. And I, what am I? You? It's easy. You're my daddy. No. But if you're not my daddy, then who are you? A predator. A predator? Yes, a predator. More ferocious than a white shark, more vicious than a crocodile, more powerful than a lion. And all these people around us that you call human beings are prey. And you, my son, I will teach you how to become a predator. And I will give you your first lesson right now. You are a piece of shit. Your wife is nothing but an old whore and your children two bloody bastards. What did you say? You mind repeating yourself? Joe. Oh, I will repeat myself, don't worry. But before I do, you should know this. My name is Henry Taylor. That ring a bell? Undoubtedly, you've heard of me. If you so much as touch me, I will take you to court and bury you in charges so that it will take you till the end of your miserable life to see the light of day. I will break you. I recommend you think it over twice before hitting me. You are a piece of shit. Your wife is nothing but an old whore and your children two bloody bastards. Good, Joe. That's good. You'll go far in life. Enjoy your meal. Waitress, my tab. Well, 
<laughs> did you see? I saw it, Eddie. And what did you learn? I... I don't know. Men are weak. Never forget that. They are weak, easy to manipulate, and malleable. And they will always find excuses for justifying their weaknesses and cowardice. Why didn't he threaten me back? Because I am more powerful and influential than he is. And the only solution would have been violence. But like any good self-respecting American, he probably believes in God. And God said that life is sacred and that killing is bad. So he couldn't bring himself to act and he buckled. And if he didn't believe in God, maybe he believes in art. And art would give him a sense of beauty, which makes violence horrifying, thereby turning him into a coward. You see, my son, both religion and art are the pillars of civilization. And civilization is just one gigantic industry that produces millions of faithless men and women, dominated by fear and the instinct for survival. But you will learn in the name of civilization and progress to control and master. So that one day you will come to realize your wildest dreams, to become even more rich and powerful than I am. My life would never be the same again after that conversation. I was introduced to a world of power and violence where only the strongest, the smartest, and the most cunning make it out. While my classmates were watching Mickey Mouse, I was studying, analyzing, dissecting hundreds and hundreds of wildlife documentaries on sea, land, and air predators. While they were surfing on weekends, I was watching boxing matches, bullfights, dogfights, cockfights, any shows that featured a sudden and violent death. While they were reading comic books, I was spending hours and hours thinking and discoursing on the four main truths of the world entrusted to me by my father. God sent his only son to walk among men, and men crucified him. Jesus died to save mankind from their sins, and mankind has continued to suffer just the same. World peace relies on the fear of the atomic bomb. Hitler was wrong because he lost the war. Had he won, history would have proved him right. A strong man is the one who has the courage to be a bastard. When I was 24, I bought my first newspaper company, the Free Mind News. Ten years later, I owned radio stations, television channels, dozens of newspapers, and became one of the most powerful men in America, and even the world. I anticipated the internet revolution, making me even more powerful. I was successful. Like my father before me, I was at the top of the ladder. In the people's eyes, I was as ferocious as a white shark, as vicious as a crocodile, and as powerful as a lion. Everything was perfect. Things were in their place, running on course, until the memorable day that I met Mindy. And then everything turned upside down. What drew me to her? Her lips, beautiful, full, luscious, blood-red lips. I told myself that her mouth would be even more beautiful with my dick in it. When she made passes at me, I didn't say no. And I was saying yes to a woman who would change my life. I've been intimate for two weeks, and you've only ever come in my mouth. Why don't you ever want to come in my pussy? Because I love to explore your mouth with my dick and come in your mouth. Or when I explode on your face, I love the way your pupils dilate and mute in comprehension, and as if there were something unnatural. But uh, I should only come in your pussy, as you were taught. I like this image. It reminds me of who I am and gives me even more pleasure than the ejaculation itself. Well, it's also good in my pussy, you know. Pussy 
is for animals. Have you ever seen a lion on lioness money shot? You know what I'd like to do with your pussy? I'd like to transplant your pussy to your forehead and fuck your brains out. You do what? I drive deep into your forehead cunt and fuck your brain. I'm sure your brain is wetter, warmer, and tighter than your little schoolgirl pussy. Charles, you are completely nuts. I mean, who would believe that you were one of the most powerful men in the world when you talk like that? One cannot be adapted to the world and have something to say. Crumb said that. Charles? Yes? Will you come in my pussy one day? No. Please? But why not? I mean, what is so unsettling about coming in a woman's pussy? Please? In the pussy just once? The most powerful cock in the world. How I would love to feel it in the warmth of my belly. Just once, just a little. Stop it, Mindy. You're behaving like a schoolgirl. <laughs> you know what I'd like to do? I'd like for you to drive me to Malibu in your black Bentley. We'll cruise along the ocean, foot to the floor, blasting rock and roll. Windows wide open. What do you say? I've always dreamed of it. You want to? It'll be as pleasurable as when you blow your load in my mouth and my pupils dilate. Really? As good as that? Cross my heart, I hope to die. I feel more of a thrill when I open up the Wall Street Journal in the morning. Oh, Charles. You're not serious. I mean, come on, when his, when his voice was screaming at the top of the lungs and our voices were mixing with... Your voice. Not mine. <laughs> Look. Look. I have goosebumps. Just like when I'm coming. <laughs> I wish it could be that way for me. A few days later, I went back on my own with a stack of rock and roll CDs sitting on the front seat. I didn't sing. I didn't feel free. But when I pulled up the sleeves of my jacket, I saw them. Goosebumps. Hundreds of them.